at the heart of Newcastle city centre. You'll be amazed. Eldon Square. Go to town this Christmas. Once upon a time, Christmas was all magic. Now, at Euro Disney, magic comes to life in a wonderland of Christmas parades, dazzling stage shows, and fairy tale adventures everywhere you look. Every day through January 3rd. Plus, staying at a Euro Disney hotel makes celebrating Christmas even merrier. Call this number for special Christmas information or see your travel agent for bookings. Just look at it. Yeah. Thank heavens for the tumble dryer. Yeah, but mine's not the same as drying outdoors. Have you ever dried them? Sylvia, something funny's happening inside your dryer. Look at the bounce. The bounce? Hey, it's not all stuck together. And it smells great. Don't tell me. That'll be the bounce. Bounce, like drying outdoors, indoors. We tested a high-performance engine over 200,000 miles, the equivalent of 15 years motoring, using new Mobile One. Then, we took it apart. What did we find? Virtually no engine wear. What helped to keep these vital engine parts like new? This part. New high-performance Mobile One. Life insurance for your engine. Which card saves you pounds at Argos? This card. Collect 2,000 Premier Points worth four pounds at Argos with every four litres of Mobile One. This Tuesday on Time Tees, Michael Rod discovers a truly leading edge company. Well, every businessman likes to feel that he's really in control and commercial break is up amongst the high flyers. We're going to be meeting the man who borrowed 60 million to go on the beer. We'll be learning who really is at the top in the gritty world of engineering. But right now, another new business opportunity is coming into land. Touchdown with commercial break. Tuesday at 7.30. Tonight, a major drug dealing scandal on some of Britain's meanest streets. There are claims that a serving police officer was drug trafficking. And it's alleged other officers planted drugs on innocent people. The only drugs that they left here with was the drugs that they brought. Um, there was no drugs here. No officer's been charged with drug offences despite mounting evidence and a major police inquiry. The drug that's at the heart of the scandal is the highly addictive crack cocaine. On the 27th of September 1990, PC Palumbo, PC Galbraith and Detective Constable Lyons and a team of Stoke Newington officers smashed their way into the home of Ida Rodorindi while a babysitter was looking after her three children. Drug squad officers led the raid using a warrant to search for stolen checkbooks. Ida found the raid in progress. She was shown a bag of drugs the raiding party said they'd found in a disused freezer. Ida was arrested and taken to Stoke Newington Police Station. She was charged with intent to supply. The police said in court that you were a drug dealer and that they'd found drugs on your premises. I am not a drug dealer. I've never been a drug dealer, and I am innocent. Stoke Newington drug trials are heard here at Snaresbrook Crown Court. The jury at Ida's trial believed the police officers. There was no fingerprint or other corroborative evidence. Ida was sentenced to four years in prison. I was there speaking the truth, nothing but the truth. And they didn't believe me because as far as I'm concerned, I'm just somebody, or should I say a nobody, standing in the dock. And the police, as far as they're concerned, with the uniform, with the power, they're the law. So anything they say goes, 
as far as they were concerned, police don't lie. Three of the policemen involved in the raid on Ida Odorindi's home were PC Ronald Palumbo, GN219, PC James Bruce Galbraith, GN97, and Detective Constable Barry Lyons. They all worked out of North London Stoke Newington Police Station. They are now suspended as part of an internal investigation, which the police themselves say is the most wide-ranging corruption inquiry in the Metropolitan Police for 20 years. Policing the streets of Stoke Newington is a tough job, a daily battle against drugs and drug-related crime in Britain's poorest borough. One drug, the highly addictive crack cocaine, is sold openly on the streets and estates, earning it the reputation of Crack City. Well, it's certainly got significant amounts of crack on the streets. I think in 1991, uh, this division seized 20% of the crack seized by the entire Metropolitan Police. It's certainly out there in great quantities. Um, it's got high uh, incidents of uh, street robbery, burglary, drug dealing, the whole range of crime. One of the major crack dealers in the Stoke Newington area was Pearl Cameron. She lived here in Sandringham Road. It's so notorious for drug dealing, it's known as the front line. Two years ago, a successful police surveillance operation hidden at the back of the house recorded 120 people a day buying highly addictive crack at £25 a time from a serving hatch in Pearl Cameron's kitchen window. In court, Pearl Cameron pleaded guilty to a conspiracy with an unnamed person to supply crack cocaine. Pearl claims she'd been paying a policeman up to £2,000 a week to supply her with cocaine. For legal reasons, we are unable to name this officer, so we are calling him Officer X. Pearl Cameron had sunk much of the profit from her drug dealing into this luxury villa in Jamaica. Despite her guilt, it has not been confiscated. Sentencing her to five years instead of the normal 12 to 15, Judge Jeffrey Grigson said, I sentence you on the basis that your dealing stemmed from the advances of a corrupt police officer. An eyewitness links Officer X to Pearl Cameron's drug dealing. The witness was present when two men called at Pearl's house. One gave a bag of drugs to Pearl. Pearl said it was Officer X. Officer X's activities helped to spark off an internal police corruption inquiry in April 1991, codenamed Operation Jackpot. It's led by Detective Superintendent Ian Russell. For 20 months, it's been probing numerous allegations that some Stoke Newington police were involved in drug dealing, theft, and conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. It is a very complex inquiry. There are many allegations being made and indeed the most recent complaint was not made until late, late last month but this inquiry is being as I say supervised by Mr McCall of the PCA Police Complaints Authority and he is satisfied that Mr Russell is progressing the inquiry as fast as is consistent with thoroughness. On August the 11th, 1990, Stoke Newington policeman Palumbo, Galbraith and Officer X smashed their way into the home of charity housing officer Rennie Kingsley. They produced a search warrant. I looked at it to, to see if they were really police. And yes, it said Stoke Newington police. And I suppose I felt good then because I thought by the time I get to the station and complain and explain what they did, and you know, I thought we'd have come to the genuine mistake which they made. But of course it wasn't a mistake, it was a genuine fit up. When you're handcuffed and somebody's telling you get up, sit down, it's very frightening, very uh, intimidating. You, you're not in control of anything and you're nobody. The policemen searched the house and produced cocaine and then LSD, which they said was Rennie's. They took him to Stoke Newington Police Station and charged him. Mr. Kingsley's always protested his innocence. He protested his innocence from the moment of his arrest at the police station where he made a complaint that he'd been fitted up by the police officers who had arrested him. It was not Rennie Kingsley's first contact with the police. A few weeks before, he'd rung New Scotland Yard to express his concern about Stoke Newington police officers he believed to be corrupt. I made a complaint um, expecting um, 
somebody to come around and see me, uh, maybe a senior officer or somebody, um, to find out what what I was, what I knew, or what I supposedly knew. Um, well, all I can say, after, in, instead of that happened, they raided me um, and planted me. That 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 was it. Rani Kingsley was found guilty on the word of the police officers and sentenced to four months in prison. He has always maintained his innocence. Three of the policemen who raided Rennie Kingsley's home were Officer X, PC Ronald Palumbo, PC James Bruce Galbraith. They've been suspended by jackpot for other matters. Forty officers have been notified they are part of the jackpot investigation. Eight officers have been transferred to other stations. I think the public are very well aware of the difference between a totally um, unsubstantiated allegation and a matter of real seriousness. That can only be determined by investigation. Police officers, just like any member of the public, are entitled to be presumed innocent until they're proven guilty. And it would be, appear that there are at least some policemen in Stoke Newington who've lost sight of right and wrong and believe that anything goes. And the quicker the inquiry reports and the more thorough are its findings, and the quicker that policemen that have committed criminal acts are prosecuted, the quicker Stoke Newington Police can have a positive relationship with the community. This is PC Ronald Palumbo. He's suspended on full pay while Jackpot continues its investigations. He was involved in the arrests of Rennie Kingsley and Ida Odorindi. What do you have to say to them? Excuse me? What do you have to say about the allegations? Last December, he was one of two officers whose evidence played a crucial part in another drugs trial at Snaresbrook Crown Court. The case collapsed after Palumbo lied twice in court. Judge Pittman dismissed the case. Although it is not a matter for me to instigate any proceedings, it would certainly be a matter for you to await to see if any action is taken against you on the basis that you were therefore this morning and indeed yesterday, giving evidence on oath that you knew to be false or did not believe to be true. The judge advised that immediate action should be taken, but Welton Action has learned that nothing was done for seven months. Palumbo continued to work as a police officer. When Jackpot eventually found out, he was suspended, as was PC Galbraith, the other arresting officer. Eula Carter walks free from prison. She came to England on holiday and ended up with a four-year sentence for possession of crack with intent to supply. She's out on bail because one of the officers who gave evidence at her trial is now suspended. Right from the start, she'd protested her innocence. If it's even to take my life, it's sure I'm innocent, I will. And I will take my life if I don't get no justice. Eula went to a Stoke Newington flat to get her hair done. She was inside when the police raided. I said, nobody raided my police. Then they put a cup of tea by my friend, Ed, to win on the law. Detective Constable Lyon said he found 19 rocks of crack in her jacket pocket. Eula said they were planted on her. At her trial, the jury may have had difficulty understanding her broad Jamaican accent. They decided to believe the police. They laugh for me because they don't understand them. They don't understand me at all. I can't believe when the man come out and say guilty. Barely a month after Eula was jailed, DC Lions were suspended. She's been released on bail because of his involvement in her case. But her name has yet to be cleared and she cannot go home to Jamaica to see her children. I don't know where them is. I'm split up. I'm split up all about. And them, them, they have nobody to wash for them. They don't have no food either. Um, People who say they are victims of police misconduct have joined together in an organisation called the Hackney Community Defence Association. If you're the victim of a crime, you go to the police. In, this, in these cases, uh, 
the police as the perpetrators of crime, we don't have anybody to turn to apart from each other. So it started off, we had uh, two or three cases, and today I would say it's about 50 people. And all the time, more people are coming forward uh, to give accounts of uh, being planted with drugs and uh, what the police have been involved in. Ida Odorindi is out of prison like Yula Carter in a highly unusual move. She too has been released early on bail. It's because of doubts about the safety of her conviction. I was given four years prison sentence for a crime I did not commit. Now, during the time I was in prison, it was the most terrible time of my life. Not of my life alone, my children also. Another person supported by the association, Dennis Tullock, has also been released from prison on bail. Dennis Tullock was arrested by PC Palumbo and DC Barry Lyons after going into a betting shop on Sandringham Road, Stoke Newington. He says the drugs the police produced were not his. But in court, the jury believed the police, and he was sentenced to four years for possession of crack with intent to supply. Operation Jackpot uncovered new evidence that led to Dennis Tullock's release on bail because his conviction may no longer be safe. But he cannot clear his name because his lawyers aren't being told what the new evidence is. You can't get the evidence out of the police because they're investigating it. That is the dilemma. There's a clash between two principles. While on the one hand, you're trying to get freedom for your own client, and the police want to get on with their own inquiries secretly. New evidence in Dennis Tullock's case led to DC Lyon's suspension, but Jackpot keeps its secrets to itself. The organisation responsible for bringing all criminal cases to court is the Crown Prosecution Service. Even they can't find out what's going on. They told World in Action. We have asked the police for the names of all those officers subject to investigation under Operation Jackpot. The police have declined to supply them with the exception of the eight who've been suspended or transferred. The CPS does not know how many trials are involved because we do not know who the police officers are. Not all officers who are causing concern have been suspended. This is PC Terence Chitty. He came to Stoke Newington from the Metropolitan Police's Territorial Support Group. Wapping, London. January the 24th, 1987. A demonstration outside Rupert Murdoch's News International newspaper plant turned violent. There were complaints about police behaviour that night, including Constable Chitty's. In court, independent witnesses supported the complainants. PC Chitty was charged with conspiracy with others to pervert the course of justice. But, due to an administrative error, the case was struck out. No disciplinary action was taken against PC Chitty. A year later, he was transferred to Stoke Newington. Now, his truthfulness has been called into question again. Within the last month, he appeared as a central witness in two drug cases. The first was that of Michael Thompson. Michael Thompson's case, from the very beginning, was that he had been planted by those police officers on, on the streets of Hackney. He made a complaint as soon as he arrived at the police station, and that was noted. A key feature of the Thompson case was the police station's system for storing confiscated drugs. These had to be signed for if taken out, and could only be removed for court or forensic purposes. Well, you have the document in front of you. That's in court, PC Chitty was cross-examined by defence barrister Peter Hall. Chitty had withdrawn the drugs for an unexplained three weeks. Yes, I've seen it now. 14th of April, 1992. Anyone looking at those records, anyone who knows how those records are put together, it would appear to them that you had the drugs in this case in your possession between the 23rd of March, 1992, and the 14th of April, 1992. It would look like that, would it not? It would, yes. Do you dispute that on the basis of these records, that is what happened? I do dispute that, yes. I wouldn't. There is no reason why I should have those there. That 
the entry in on the 14th of the 4th is not my writing. Well, I suggest that one of the reasons may be this, that you had to take them from the property store, perhaps to maybe threaten someone else that they will be planted with them. Not at all, sir. And you had those with you as a bit of an incentive to them. What, already sealed up in a property bag with an exhibit label on them? That's a little bit outrageous. Michael Thompson was acquitted, but questions still remain about how drugs are stored at Stoke Newington. And so what it does show is that there is, as I said before, something of a free-for-all when it comes to hard drugs at Stoke Newington Police Station, and not even their, their store records can be relied upon to ensure where those drugs are at any particular time. I'm happy here that once the drugs enter our system, once they're recorded on the charge sheet and recorded in the property store, they are correctly dealt with and always have been. The station logbook from that case shows the drugs were taken out three weeks before the, before the court hearing. I know nothing of that particular case and I'm not prepared to go into it. Have there been other cases like Michael Thompson's? I think there are hundreds of cases and that's the fear that there are hundreds of cases like Michael Thompson. There are several people in prison uh, who are claiming that they have been wrongfully convicted on exactly the same evidence as Michael Thompson. A week after Thompson was acquitted, PC Chitty was back at Snaresbrook Crown Court as a key witness in another drugs trial, that of Raymond Simpson. I was looking forward, looking at a very long prison sentence for something that I never did. If I, if each man has to bear his own cross. But if, if, if they had found something on me, it would be a different matter. Raymond Simpson was arrested at the Jerk Chicken Cafe on Sandringham Road. The police said he had £5,000 worth of crack. He denied it. At his trial, there was conflicting evidence in police statements. The judge said there was a fault line right to the heart of the prosecution case and stopped the trial. I mention this because I have to say that a number of these police drug raids come before the courts at Snaresbrook and a number of judges, of whom I am one, are getting increasingly concerned that conflicting evidence is put by the prosecution to the jury, which puts a very difficult position before the jury and indeed the judge. I know it is difficult, but I do think these sort of cases need very careful attention and expert assessment before they come anywhere near the courts. PC Terence Chitty is still a serving officer at Stoke Newington Police Station. Raymond Simpson was acquitted. His solicitor, Joe Hill, says he's had many similar cases. We've had many cases where um, the police have said that they have found drugs on clients of our, um, clients of our firm. So um, when they've gone to court and they've been found not guilty and the jury have heard the evidence, they must have come to the conclusion in rejecting the evidence of the police that the police were lying. Um, this places jury, juries in impossible positions because on the one hand it's very important that um, the fight against drugs is supported by everyone. I have clients who are affected um, as a result of drugs dealings both in, in the sense that they are addicted and as a consequence of their addiction they're committing burglaries, robberies, they're involved in serious assaults and consequently I'm concerned that the fight against drugs is dealt with but where you have cases where police officers can't be believed that undermines the whole system. Just as has been done in this case but there's quite a few other cases out there that I know a few people that I know that was inside right now that hasn't done anything and they've been sent to prison for a long long time for things that it's not theirs. Detectives working at Stoke Newington Police Station are still battling with the drugs menace and connected crime. The continuing allegations and long-running inquiry now makes it difficult to get drugs convictions. I make no comment on the fact that we have lost some cases, uh, and I can say that I feel some of those cases have, uh, uh, have been abandoned when they could, perhaps in other climates, have succeeded. I, I don't say necessarily that... Uh, that is indictment upon the officers. I keep an open mind.
because there has been nothing concluded. What we are dealing with here is allegations that have yet to be fully investigated, allegations which have yet to be resolved. If you have a secret report with secret findings, and in particular, if there are no prosecutions that arise from this report, then people in Stoke Newington will believe the report has just been a cover-up. And that would be a disaster for police community relationships in Stoke Newington. And it would be a disaster for the war against drugs that all of us in Stoke Newington want to see. Rennie Kingsley served a prison sentence for a crime he's adamant he did not commit. His experience two years ago at the hands of police officers who are still being investigated has changed him. Like everybody, when you grow up, you were, you were brought up to think like police and ministers and, and people of these are um, people you trust and take your problems to. My perception of them is quite different because I know now that I can't go to them for help. I have no trust in them and I'm sure a lot of people don't anymore. Ida Odorindi spent over a year in prison, separated from her three children before she got bail. You want banana? All right, Being locked up, away from my children, especially my small baby, it was terrifying, really awful. I missed her a lot. I wasn't able to see them for quite a long time. That in its own is a punishment. To know she was growing without me, I knew nothing of her. My daughter still calls my friend mommy. That is very hurtful. Ida Odorendi, Dennis Tullock, Eula Carter and Rennie Kingsley still wait to hear when they can go to the appeal court to get their convictions quashed and their names cleared. No police officer has yet been charged with any offences arising from their cases. on ITV. Okay, mate, we're ready. Boom. Oh, good. Bravo. The double dealers are being double dealt. Harry, they've gone for it. Get out of it. Get back on route. I'll phone the police. While blood's drying. Drive! A right old muddle. Boom. Tuesday at 9 on ITV. Starting next tonight on Time Tees, the life and times of Henry Pratt. We're certain that no one can resist the delicious, sweet, oaty taste of Kellogg's Golden Crisp. But we're happy to offer anyone who can a full refund within 28 days covering purchase, packaging and postage. The offer is open until the 31st of December 1992. One claim only per household. The address is on the side. So to get your refund, just drop us a note with your unfinished box, OK? Kellogg's Golden Crisp. An open box is an empty box. Or your money back. What have you done this morning? Maths. And you? Double French. Je m'appelle Kevin. <laughs> what have you got? Sandwiches, Sandwiches apple, packet, packet of crisps. crisps. Here, I bet my crisps taste better than your crisps. Why? They're golden wonder. Mega or what? Here, let's try them. Mm, your crisps did taste better than mine. Told you. Oi! Golden Wonderland. One bite and you're there. I mean, he's weaning himself from his relationship with me by using a fake monkey for companionship. Why not use a fake woman? Oh, well, honey, that's why Stan went to the psychiatrist in the first place. <laughs> Golden Moments from the Girls, Wednesday at 10. And here's what the boys have to say. Listen, here's a warning. Always use a rubber. Chicken. <laughs> Wednesday from 10 on 4.